welcome to the first session for the series test automation framework for web applications built using cypress and javascript this session would be more into the overview side so we'll have a look on the features that we are going to implement in this series for the test automation framework so let's get started so first of all uh, we'll see like what all are the required softwares that we need to have that we need to install in our machine before we work before we start working with the cypress for the test automation so we'll need to uh, install this we we'll need to set up the node.js first of all and then with the help of node.js we will get the npm and with the help of this npm we'll set up the cypress so once the cypress uh, setup is done so what we'll see the project structure like what exactly all these directories and files does means okay so this is something the skeleton like this is the default project structure which i got after setting up the cypress okay i have not written a single line of code yet but still i got something so basically for example if i go with the end-to-end -end directory so it is under cypress so this is the place where we actually have to put all our test cases we call it as spec files in case of cypress okay so let's proceed for the next we'll see how easy it is to execute our test cases in the different browsers for example uh, cypress basically supports different browsers so it uh, you're able to execute on the chrome browser we are able to execute on the firefox we are able to execute on the electron this third one is the electron browser which actually comes with the cypress setup and the fourth one is the edge browser okay then once we are able to execute our test cases then we'll see a reporter called cypress smoke awesome reporter so we'll use this smoke awesome reporter for the reporting purpose so this reporter only like uh, we will be able to see all our past paid and skipped test cases we'll be able to put the filters as well for example, if you have executed 100 test cases and out of those 100, 80 code passed and 20 code failed. If you only want to filter those 20 failed test cases, then we can click on one icon and we'll be able to see only 20. Okay. Also, we'll see how can we attach the screenshots and the videos of the test execution for the failed test cases. So they will be directly attached to this uh, report only. Okay. Let's proceed for the next part. Okay. So what we are going to do basically the test scenario, the test case which we are going to automate is uh, we'll take the source demo application example. Uh, we are going to automate one test scenario that will be the login. So we'll be staking some data. We'll be taking the valid credentials, the username and password. We'll be filling this information inside these two text boxes and then we'll click on the login button. And we have to make sure that, yeah, we are able to login. Okay. I mean, we are landing on the right page. Then we'll see one of the cypress feature that is the test runner so this feature is going to help us with the tracking purpose so for example if you have written 10 test steps in your test case for example you're logging into application first of all then you're filling some information then you're clicking on something then you are validating that this particular web element is present or not this particular text is the same or not okay so we'll be able to see everything like we will be able to track if you do mouse over We'll be able to see the application state exactly okay we are going to cover all of these things in our up upcoming sessions next we'll see like how can we handle the different environments so basically what happens uh, when we work in the industry so uh, we have we get the different environments for our application it's not like that we only have one environment that is the production no we definitely have the lower environments like we might have dev we might have QA, we might have pre-prod environment, right? So how exactly uh, we can do this configuration? Basically, we are going to use something called environment variables. So we will be keeping our application base URL so that in case if you want to execute your test cases, maybe on QA environment or on pre-prod environment or prod environment, like where exactly. So that will be configurable. So there is a only one place that you need to make the change and we will be able to execute on the multiple environments for that. We are going to use something called Cypress custom command. So actually Cypress provides so there are some predefined commands. Okay, but you can actually create your custom commands as well. So we'll be creating the custom commands using Cypress to navigate to the application. Okay. The next part is we'll see like how can we add the uh, how can we have this XPath plugin support. So by default what happens Cypress does not support the XPaths. Okay, as a locator strategy. So it only supports the CSS selectors. Now I see a lot of people are more comfortable with the X path, but yeah, it totally depends on you with which type of locator strategy you want to go with. So I usually prefer X path. So it's upon you. We'll see like how can we add this plugin support as well in this automation framework. The next thing is uh, we are going to see the tagging. So for example, if you have written 100 test cases in your automation source so far and uh, you have marked 40 of your test cases as sanity. 
okay so maybe sanity or high priority so we'll see like how can we execute how can we use this tagging and how can we execute this uh, 40 test cases only the important ones okay going further the next thing is uh, as i already mentioned like we are going to automate for login scenario right so login test we are going to put some information that is username and password right so what we are going to you uh, do basically there is something called fixtures so with the help of these fixtures there will be a json file and we are going to pick data from this json file the valid credentials which i am talking about is username and password so we'll be taking this username and password from the json file that is the fixture and we'll be putting this json file data like the data the valid credentials data into a test case we are not going to hard code inside the test case itself there will be a different place okay so in case if you want to change your credentials in future so there will be one place only you do not need to go each and every test case and you don't need to make the changes no okay this is the data which you can use in every test case for example in 10 or 15 test cases as well you can use so there will be the only one place where you need to make the changes okay the next thing is uh, when it comes to the ui automation so there is one pay, uh, object uh, like uh, there is one design pattern which is very famous and it's a recommended design pattern that is page object model so we'll see how exactly we can implement the page object model design pattern in cypress and uh, we'll see like how can we handle the application pages also the application components as well okay so in this case for example you see, you see this is the screenshot from login page so these are the three locators three elements basically two are text boxes one is username another is password and the third one is the button login okay now what are we going to suppose with these elements basically operations right so in the one class what we need to do we define the elements and we define the operations okay so we want to log into the application so for that what we are going to do we are going to fill some data inside these two text boxes username and password and then we are going to click on the login button okay we'll see everything step by step then we'll see how can we actually create a base page so base page is something which will be having all the common utilities all the common operations which you can do with your web elements for example if there is an element called link okay button okay so you can perform a click operation you can perform a double click you can perform a right click you can fill some text fill some data inside the text boxes right you can perform the mouse over operation so we are going to have one class only for this all okay so this is the class which we are going to use as a parent so we'll be calling the methods from this class and we'll be able to perform the operations after that we'll see how can we actually implement our utilities so for, uh, for example test retries for example if you want to re-execute your test case the test case which is getting failed if you want to execute it for one time or two times automatically uh, that execution if you need so we'll see how can we do also we'll see the videos so what happens cypress actually gives us many utilities many uh, features so video is also the, one of them so we can actually record the video basically uh, we can have the session recorded and we can put it inside the reports okay we'll see in the utilities section finally what we are going to do we are actually going to execute our test cases in the ci environment see when you are working in any industry so you're not supposed to execute in your local environment so there will be a repository which you are going to get so there where exact there exactly uh, you need to uh, create your pipelines for your automated test case either it is api or ui but you have to come up with something with the ci environment okay so that everyone can be able to uh, everyone will be able to see the reports will be see to the, the execution and everything okay nobody is going to check your local machine right so this is not the time like uh, where you will execute your test cases in the local machine and then you report it something okay so we are going to use github actions basically so this actions is one of the feature which is provided by the github so we'll see how can we exactly uh, do this setup okay then we'll see three different types of executions basically first of all uh, for example you may need to uh, execute on the different environments right your test cases so we'll see how can we execute on the predefined browser for example if you are comfortable with chrome browser so we can definitely set it set it up okay then maybe uh, your team members may require like uh, i should be able to select the browser at the runtime for example if someone wants to execute on firefox someone on edge or someone on chrome so we'll see how can we do that setup as well also uh, the most important thing in ui automation so basically we need the more coverage right so we want to execute the test cases in parallel mode in parallel mode onto the different uh, browsers right so parallel cross browser testing basically so we'll be able to do that as well with the ci 
okay with the help of this github actions so this is a screenshot basically uh, what we have to do we actually need to configure everything in the yaml file we need to create the github workflows so we'll see what exactly uh where, where how exactly we can do this and how will we be able to execute our test cases okay and the final uh, thing would be uh, yeah we will be able to see like we'll be adding some code comments basically when we are writing the code that's completely okay that you are writing the code you are the expert you know everything okay but when you are not there in the project and if someone else is joining your project so it matters a lot that you provide complete information of your code okay by just having a look on the comments of this code so the other person should be able to understand that what exactly are we trying to do in this method in this variable okay so for example this is the login to application method right this is the name of the method so this is the document comments so basically what happens when anyone is using this method called login to, login to application and if they do the mouse over operation they'll be able to see everything you see i've added these details here and if i do a mouse over on the login to application i do not need to go inside the code implementation i'm able to see everything every detail here so the other person who else has joined your team he will be able to see like what exactly you were trying to achieve with this method okay and the last thing would be when we have the repositories so for providing the information about your project okay this is really really very very important like what is the project structure what is the reporting you're going to use what is the ci environment okay what are the different directories you have what are the different files means okay so everything we're going to put it up in the readme.md file so that you can actually share the repository link with someone and they will be able to understand like yeah what all things have been done in this project so far so high level overview it will be okay i uh, i am going to put all this code into the github repositories basically once we are done with all the sessions i am already done with the coding part okay but i'll make that pub repository as public once we are done with the video sessions so in the next session we will actually start doing the implementation part we'll setting up the softwares we'll set up the required softwares like node.js and then we'll go for the cypress okay so i think that's all for this session thank you for your time have a very good day